splendor, we worship the Lord. In God is glory and strength. The Lord is mighty. God is with us. In torrents and storms, God's peace prevails. In rumbling thunder, God's mighty voice soothes. The Lord is majestic. God is with us. The whisper of the Lord snaps silence. The unwavering sound persists. The Lord is awesome. God is with us. As flames being fanned, the presence grows. In its shadow, the wilderness flees. The Lord is powerful. God is with us. Enthroned, God rules the universe. The peaceful scepter prevails. God reigns. God is with us. In whirling winds, nature acknowledges glory. The people in the temple rejoice. It is certain. God is with us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom. And make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the call to the word of God. Today's gospel starts with disciples obsessing over who will be closest to Jesus, leading to Jesus teaching his followers about God's take on importance and power. Here Jesus makes it explicit that the reversal of values in God's community is a direct challenge to the values of the dominant culture, where wielding power over others is what makes you great. When we pray, your kingdom come, we are praying for an end to tyranny and oppression. We pray this gathered around the cross a sign of great shame transformed to be the sign of great honor and service. Let us sing, Great Are You, Lord.
to remind us who God is and what God does. Even our lessons today are reminding us what God does, who God is. Sometimes we lose track and we assume God is there to meet our expectations, not us to meet His. But today, the one that I think is important to remember is that one. In one of our readings, it talks about sheep and the shepherd. And that window always reminds us of who Jesus is. It's up there, up front, always kind of hanging over my shoulder, always there to remind you guys of this, that God loves us, that God takes care of us like he takes care of those sheep. <coughs> Through the ups and downs, the stripes and gutters, the good and the bad. Because trust me, there's good, there's bad. But God is always there, carrying us, loving us, looking out for us. And when those windows were put in, they were meant to be a reminder of that, no matter what. And our lesson today is a reminder. Like sheep, we have gone astray. But even when we've gone astray, we will then in the 99 to find us. So no matter what, remember that. And those windows for many generations have reminded us and guided us in that. And now, like sheep we have gone astray, he also feeds us at his table to let us rise and be fed by the good shepherd.
Now, let us read the gospel by singing together, Alle, Alleluia. Mark the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. 
Now, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them together and said, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers, Lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for men. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. Lord. You may be seated. These two brothers make that ridiculous request. They have been with him for so long, but for some reason, the two brothers, they want the best spots at the table. They try to have this nice little end run around the other apostles and say, hey, which I always, always love. Whenever my kids say, hey, can you do something for me, Dad? I always say, you gotta tell me before I say yes. Oh, come on, we parents know that, right? <laughs> the one moment you say, yeah, I'll do whatever. It's the rid most ridiculous request ever. You get it in writing. And Jesus wants to know, what do you guys want? And they want to sit in the second and third place in charge of everyone in, in all of history. And of course, the other ten are living. Living. And so we get this important teaching. We get this important teaching because of that great impetus in all people. To get that extra, to get that spot. It is why when we cut cake, someone cuts and the other person picks, right? Because we want it to be a certain way. We always do. And so Jesus takes this moment and he raises up this great difference. What is this kingdom and what is mine? King. That is the heart of our lesson today. That great and amazing tension between our way and his way. And we must say our way. Because it's in all of us, is it not? That desire to have it our way. In fact, when all the ads of the world and all of the great salesmanship always goes down to work, it can be just the way you want it. Even I grew up with the phrase, to try to modify my thinking, it's just the way you like it. No matter what it is, it's just the way you like it. But we don't want it that way. Over and over and over, it becomes this interesting reality. Right? Is that the kingdom of God? Every Sunday we pray, and our little ones pray, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And every time I teach it in confirmation, I have the great lecture on, this is probably the most misspoken prayer ever. Because oftentimes we really want to say, my will be done, and my kingdom come. Because over and over and over, the struggle that we have in the world is this. We choose our path and our way, no matter what. Do we want more of him? Or do we admit he is the truth? The great cancer and disease in all of us. And over and over again, God raises up that it is his kingdom that must be observed by us. And the struggle that I always have is that as much as I would love to define and raise the parameters and give the greatest definition of God's kingdom, I've never been able to. Because throughout existence, I have realized over and over again, I have caught glimpses. That over and over and over, if we watch, if we see, we can see God scratching holes in our ways and letting his light shine. And that in the midst of the darkness we see, the kingdom breaks in. And I remember this one more than any other. I was in India at the time. And you've heard many Indian stories for such a short trip. Needless to say, it was a fascinating lens on all things. But one of the great issues that we had on that trip is, lo and behold, in southern India, somebody got sick. I always remember when traveling internationally, there was one directive that we were told over and over and over again while traveling internationally. And I still remember one professor looking at me and saying this. I think he was looking at me specifically. Don't die. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to move a body around the States, let alone into a different country? Your family's gonna hate trying to get your body back. So whatever you do, don't die. And it was always the frustration they were looking at me. Like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> but second to that is do not get ill. Do not have to go to an international hospital. Here we are in southern India, in Bombay, and someone gets sick. I don't know if they ate something they weren't supposed to, but it was bad. <laughs> And the dehydration set in. And so we were staying at a school. And the president came and said, we have to take the entrance. And they took her. They took her to this hospital. And they were getting her rehydrated and the fluid back in. And we were worried. One, because somebody's sick. And you have limited lifelines when you're that far away. We gathered around and we started trying to count out how many uh, rupees and stuff we have. How are we going to pay for this? How are we going to handle this? And a couple days later, she came back. And we got all the information together, and I remember the professor calling the hospital saying, All right, so what is the final bill? And this is, it, it's, it's been covered. We're like, what? It's been covered. The president of the school paid it out of pocket. An Indian man, president of a school whose wealth was nowhere near some of these families traveling, it's just they couldn't access, paid out of pocket the cost of a stranger's hospital stink. And we were stunned. In typical Indian fashion, we go, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. And what he said stays with you. You are 
my guest. We are a Christian school. We see Christ in the guest. That is the kingdom. Do you see it? Do you see God's reign? When this man, without thinking, saw Christ in the other, the random person, the guest in his country, in his state, in his school, shows compassion. That is the kingdom. Hopefully you have seen those moments where you are just shocked, where you are just stunned. Because you say, people just don't do that, right? That's nuts. That's stupid. That is God's kingdom. And maybe that's always the inherent struggle. In our kingdom, we know it's smart and right and wise. And when he shows up, it always looks so stupid, doesn't it? So weird, so off. Like on a good Friday, they couldn't believe a king would be nailed to a tree. How stupid. But that is God's kingdom. A God in flesh who died. How ridiculous. But that is God's kingdom. And so maybe the final message at all, and the grace, brothers and sisters, is when it seems so ridiculous, that way forward, that option, that possibility in our broken world, to see the Christ in the other, to see the kingdom break in, Maybe the ridiculousness of it all, like dying and rising, is the sign it's his. Amen. Brothers and sisters of Christ, Please join me in singing our hymn of the day at the name of Jesus.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ.
pray together an offering prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for all your gifts of goodness and grace. Receive these gifts from our hands as a sacrifice of praise to you. And teach us to honor you each day by our obedience to your will. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now receive this one. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forever. Amen. Okay. Our sending song is forever.